Okay, the last objective of the chapter, objective four, as I said before, does X1 contribute to the model? Or as we, know, we now know that the model is useful, meaning that X1 and X2 taken as a group, taken as a group, sort of all pulling together, makes a nice contribution. Does X1 by itself contribute to the model? Okay, and after we answer the question yes or no by hypothesis testing, what's going to be the next question after that? Very good. Does X2 contribute to the model? And if it turns out, which it may be that way on the test, there are three of them, you got to do this a third time. Does X2 contribute to the model? But it turns out each one of them takes about 20 seconds, so. And again, this can be repeated for three and four and five and six and whatever other X's you have in the equation. Now, the first thing is going to be to write it out as hy hypotheses. And some of you might even be able to so mention it and might even remember it or be able to guess it. How, what would be the mathematical? So, so the first one, X1 is not, X1 does not contribute. And X1 does contribute will be, the, will be the English version of this. How would you write it out mathematically? How would H0 be um, expressed mathematically quickly because we only have two minutes. And the answer, which I think some of you know, is that beta 1 equals 0. Remember that previous slide, the beta 1, which is, a, which is a parameter in front of the x1. If that's 0, it means x1 drops out of the equation. And if x1 belongs in the equation, then that number will not be 0. That's step number 1. Step number 2, you do a t calculation. But except, the good news is you don't have to calculate it. It's found on the printout. Where is it found? Uh, Brian, you might have to aim the camera in this direction. That's the t-stat, the thing that just like we did in I'm gonna, if we did chapter 13, then you're up, you're up to speed for this one. Which one would you be using? This, this one, this one, not the intercept. Well, the x1 that corresponds to price. I mean, got to keep track of which variable is which. So what's the, what's the t-stat opposite the word price? Clearly, it's going to be a 2.30. So all you got to do is find it on, the, pre on the, the, the right number on the page, and you're done. What about step number three? Anybody have a problem with finding the 2.30? Step number three is to make one of those diagrams. To which diagram we're going to make? Well, again, we're not getting the whole theory again. It's going to be a T diagram. T for individual variables and F for all the variables. And will it be two-sided or one-sided? Well, to make your life easier, all of chapter 14 will be two-sided. So this, you always chop the alpha in half. So this is going to be reject a zero if it's going to be pi. You could have it, of course, one-sided, but we won't, have, we won't see any examples like that. Do not reject a zero. And finally, we need to have the degree of freedom. Anybody want to take a, qu a quick crack at the degree of freedom in the, in the remaining minus one minute? What? Well, two is wrong. N minus K minus one. Okay, in this case, we have, I think, 15 for the k n. K is 2, and once comes out to 12. If, the, if k was 3, it would be, be whatever. Now, just to, as a quick relationship between chapter 14 and chapter 13, if, if, if we were dealing with chapter 13, what would the k be? Quickly, if, if this was chapter 13, what would be k? k? Two. One. Two variables, but one, k, k would be 1. So it would be n minus 1 minus 1, which is n minus 2, which is all of chapter 13, it was n minus 2. So uh, a lot of them are consistent. Anyway, can somebody quickly look up the point 0, 2, 5 F table down to row number, down to row number 12, or degree of freedom 12? 2.1788 okay. minus 2.1788. And moving on to step number 4, you take this number, and where is 2.3? Is it in the reject region? Yes, it's bigger than 2.17. Therefore, the answer is to reject a zero. And X1 does contribute to the model. Okay, that's the answer now. But give, me, give me another five seconds to finish it up. Now, what, what about X2? How can we do the whole thing quickly? The answer is yes. First of all, the H0 is beta 2 equals zero versus H1 beta 2 not equals zero. The T that we calculate, or call the T stat on, on, the, on, the, on the printout, the T stat was what number? 2.85. That takes a second just to find it when you know where you're looking for it. What about step number three? Do I have to make another picture? 
Well, the alpha is going to stay the same probably from two parts of the problem. The degree of freedom is going to stay the same. So therefore, the cutoff point is going to be exactly the same cutoff point. So what you got to do for step number four now, so step number three, you don't have to repeat. Step number four is take this number and indicate by an arrow where we are. Where are we? We're also past 2.17. So what's the answer to the second sub-question? X2 reject A0. And X2 also does contribute. So both of them contribute to the model in this case. Does contribute. Um, 